Now, as far as you two, you did Pride with Flyleaf. Flyleaf. Fun Family Values yeah. 06. Yeah. Who, how did that transpire? Flyleaf um, was managed by a friend of, uh, of mine, Jen, and also uh, Jeff Quantnitz at the firm. And my manager, Mark Pollock, was at the firm as well. And I saw them. I, I went down. So my, Ray Luzier told me to go see them and, and check them out. And I, I saw them, and I was blown away because they did a version of uh, something that, of a, of a uh, Nine Inch Nails song. And I was like, well, you killed it. It was an amazing version. And then I just, they were saying, like, we do this, we do Stay by U2. And I was like, you know what? Let's do something on the road, maybe Family Values, and let's try and do something. But I didn't want to do Stay. I wanted to do, like, something substantial, like Pride. Uh, something that was just a huge, massive influence on my life. And um, I told her, like, you know, if we do this, we're going to have to fucking totally bring it because we cannot fuck with Bono. It's got to be like something as elegant as you two would do. So it was a real, you know, we walked out on stage and did it. You know what I mean? We walked out on a stage and just did it. And, and, and you know, you can sit in a studio and make these things sound amazing, but we, we like brought this energy on stage. It was a really exciting moment. I probably, that's probably one of the proudest moments of my life as far as being technically singing. And, and having to bring Bono, that was a big, that was a big deal. So I was very proud of that. And especially Lacey and everybody with Flyleaf, they're, they're totally amazing. I'm so proud of them and I, I'm so glad that they're having success and they're devout Christians and I'm very, I'm, uh, you know, I was very humbled by their beliefs and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, was, it was interesting. It was really beautiful. So would you work with them again? Sure. <clears throat> and we have that on record. I would work with them. Um, one, did you record it for the X-Files soundtrack? That was Chris Carter himself called and wanted something uh, that sounded similar to Hey Man, I Shot, but he was really, 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 really on it. And they really, and I was right in the middle of title and I didn't want to do it. And they just kept saying, like, we want you to do one is the loneliest number. And I was really like, I was just not, I just wasn't making the connection. And... Finally, I was like, you know, you know, I don't want to piss off the X Files guy. He's a, he's an immensely cool human being. I better do it. So I did it, and it was really amazing because my brother Robert had the opportunity to go work with him again, and and it was amazing. He's like, he's like, yeah, Rich. He's like, yeah, Robert. I love your I love your brother. He's rich. He's just really, he really he's really aggressive, and he goes for his his local. So it was a it was a it was a win win for both me and my brother to to kind of meet Chris Carter. Trip like I do. Mm -hmm. <coughs> did did the label pick Crystal Method for you to work with? My or? manager Richard Bishop is their manager. That's how some of these things happen. He played me. Uh, he played me um, their record, and I heard Trip like I do, and I just took the song in, a, in CD form and, and put it in my computer and cut it up and played like two or three guitar parts over it and then wrote all these vocals and sang it to him over the phone and said, what do you think? Because they wanted to do a record where it was rock meets electronic and we were, you know, with, with filter. With, well, I was already kind of electronic, but they were really electronic. And anyways, it was just one of these moments where it was just it just clicked and it was just a great experience and, and uh, you know I'd love to work with them too again. Now Frank <clears throat> played with you guys last month? No he played with us in March. Oh, in March. Yeah. How, how He's in Iraq. He's doing good. His brother is here today. I can't find him though because he, he called me at the last minute and said I'm on my way and I'm like ah Woody at the North Gate. I don't know like how this place works. But uh Frank is doing well. He um, uh, he's in a part of Iraq. Where, you know, the, I guess the surge is kind of working, and um, you know, which I guess that means they're just not going to kill each other and kill us. But uh, so he's safe. And speaking of that whole Iraq thing, 
very, very troubling. And last question, when you guys did the MySpace show, yeah. how did that feel? I, I, the reason why I wanted to play Operation MySpace was because um, I wanted to put, especially with Frank coming out and playing Hey Man, Nice Shot with us, I wanted to put a human face to the word troop. Because just because these guys are volunteers, you know what I mean? Justin Ireley, <clears throat> Justin Ireley, we dedicated the record to, to Justin Ireley. Justin Ireley was a, you know, a, a young fan who loved Filter. He made one of the first Filter web pages back when the internet was new and he was probably like 15 or something. And, you know, he was 18 and graduated from high school and he needed to do something and it was 1998 and I'll, I'll, I, I need to get some money and my parents don't make enough money to put me through school so I'll go and get be in the reserves. I love America. I'll be in the reserves. I could do the military. I think I can handle it. I, I get some money. I can go be go study computer science. Well, you know, 1998 turns into 2002, and they pull him out of his third year, or no, his senior year, actually, of college. And all he wanted was to go to college. That's all he wanted the money for. They pull him out, and they ship this 22-year-old kid now off to Baghdad. He's there for 10 days, and he gets killed. And that's the story behind a lot of what this war is about. They've, they haven't used enough troops to gain security until they really just overly applied the army and gotten you know, everybody out there for this surge. And they've kind of got a little stability now. But how are you gonna, how are you gonna sustain that? And it's just, I just, it's just, a, it's a war based on lies. It's, 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 we're not over there because we love the Iraqis. We're over there because we want their fucking oil. That's really, that's the reason. And everyone should know that. And Americans should fucking know that and they should fucking be aware. Like, like, I don't, I can't believe every, like, I'm, I feel like I'm the only band saying this. Like, I feel like I'm the only, like, I mean, I know there's more. I know Everlast is saying some things. I know, I know there's other, but, but it's like, I want to like, I want to like take back my country. And, and, um, and it's, and it's, and it's, and it's things like Frank and it's things like, you know, Frank, you know, Frank, he's a patriot, but that doesn't mean you just send him off and fucking have him die for oil. So, you know what I mean? But pick your, pick your battles wisely. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it, the, the political angle on this record is not because I'm, I'm trying to do it because I'm trying to be cool or something. I literally, I can't stand and watch human beings do this to each other. I, I can't watch it. it just we're, 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 we're crack whores for oil in this country. We are, we are, we are sucking the balls off of, uh, you know, if, if, you know, of, of huge, huge corporations that don't want future technologies to work. They don't want solar to work. You can't, the, front, the sun comes out, you're gonna fucking, that's free. You can't make any money off of that shit. So it's like, I just think we're better than that. I think humans are better than that. I, I, know, I, I know it's not cool to be on a soapbox. I know it's not, it's really, it's obviously not profitable to, to wanna remind people that fucking like, they're being fucked over, you know? But at the same time, I have kids. I have a kid, I have a wife, I have too many friends. I have, I, have, I have a family on this planet. I'm worried. I'm, I'm, I'm concerned, and, I, and I'm not going to sit around and, and talk about my fucking bling or my fucking crib or my fucking car. I could give a fuck. I care about real things, or, and I take my music very seriously. It's not. It used maybe on another level. It was about you know, beer drinking and having fun and blowing you know your mind off. And, and, and I, I did have a Hunter S. Thompson vibe in the '90s and. You know, but even he should have wrangled it in, and and because we need Hunter S. Thompson now, we need we need him, a, a, a collective like a collected Hunter S. Thompson. We need more people like that, and um, you know, so I, I just you know, that's all I got, I guess. I'm, I'm done venting. Sorry about that. Okay.
Awesome. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Thank you so much.